Hey you guys, welcome back to Kyle Heath Art. In this video, I wanted to share with you my current portrait drawing process and uh, just chat for a while. <laughs> I'll probably be sharing portrait drawing tips and things like that, but um, yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about a, a plan for this. I, I just wanted to share a video and, and talk with you. So that's what we're gonna be doing. It's gonna be loose and kind of unplanned and we'll just have a good old time talking about art. What you're seeing here in the drawing today is um, kind of a skills test that I put myself through. In case you don't know, I'm on a two year journey to becoming a professional artist and I just completed month number one of my studies. So I decided at the end of the month, this would be a good time to test my skills and see, have I gotten any better? Um, and because I've spent a significant portion of my time over the past month in a uh, face drawing course, um, I decided that drawing a portrait from reference would be a good test for this month. And this is something that I'm probably gonna do every month, actually. This, this was really enjoyable for me, and I think it makes sense as a way to, to measure my progress. So what you're seeing right here actually isn't the drawing. Um, this is just a little warm-up I'm doing. Um, it's of the same reference model, so this is the model I'll be drawing. But, um, but right now you're just seeing my warm-up. Uh, at this time, I hadn't drawn any faces that day, and so I didn't want to dive right into a drawing that was, you know, going to take a, an hour and 15 minutes without loosening up a little bit. But so you just saw me conclude my warm up and, uh, and now I'm getting into the, the real deal. But yeah, like I said, uh, over the past month, I've been spending a lot of time drawing faces. Um, it's been a great experience for me especially because I love drawing faces. Um, for years, actually, that's kind of been my go-to thing with art is I'll open up Pinterest, uh, look up some faces of models and just draw them. That's what I did in the evening for, for years as kind of a way to blow off steam. And that's actually exactly what I'm doing here before you now. I, I searched for uh, a face on Pinterest and uh, I started drawing it. Now, I wish I could share the reference with you, but I'm not really sure if I'm allowed to, like copyright-wise. And in the interest of um, playing it safe, I, I decided I wasn't going to show the reference until I, uh, I, know, I know what I'm able to do. Um, but, uh, but I am looking at, at a reference when I'm drawing this. This isn't from the imagination. Um, so in this course that, that I'm currently taking, um, the teacher basically breaks down the face into a large, simple form, and then smaller, simple forms, and then even smaller, simple forms. And each iteration of those simple forms is supposed to support and describe the, the larger form that it sits on top of. Now, if you've seen my recent video on how to start your paintings, it's actually the exact same concept as that. So if you find that interesting and you, you wanna see a process for painting that follows in the same way, then, uh, then check out that video. But as you see here, I started off with a simple egg shape and some horizontal lines denoting um, the brow line, the eyes, the nose, etc. And then from there, um, I'm simply iterating on top of those shapes with more complexity. Now, the name of the game for me with drawing these portraits now is to try to give a sense of the 3D form. So as you're looking at my drawing, um, if it looks kind of um, sculptural, then I'm, I'm 
doing my job correctly. <laughs> That's what I'm intending to convey, is a real strong sense that there's a 3D form here that you're looking at, um, which is not a skill that I've, I've, I've really had much strength in over the years. Historically, as I've drawn figures, my focus has generally been on the lines and the angles and the differences between those, and not so much on the actual thing that I was drawing. Now, I think that is a wonderful way to draw, um, and being able to measure the differences in your lines and your angles is a necessary skill in being able to draw. But it's not necessarily all there is to drawing either. If I were to take that skill and um, extend it to its, uh, its furthest limits, basically what, what I would be was a master copier. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a master copier. And that skill, um, yeah, yeah, take the skill of measuring your lines as far as you can. That, that will make a huge difference in your drawing ability. It's absolutely necessary. But what I've realized since starting this class was I have a tendency to, um, to put so much of my attention on the lines that I'm actually not really paying attention to the thing that I'm drawing and trying to get an understanding of that thing. Now that is, that's something that I want. That's a value that I have is to like understand the stuff that I'm drawing. Um, and so I'm trying to use this course as an opportunity to deepen my ability to pay attention to the thing that I'm drawing. So again, previously, I've, I've put my energy into paying attention to the lines and the relationships, but I've not paid much attention to how those lines relate to each other in a holistic sense and what that, what that means about the thing that I've created. And this is looking nice and sculptural now. I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw up a picture of how I, how I drew portraits before this month. And that way you can see kind of a nice comparison. You can see that my placements are, are accurate, you know, they're reasonably accurate, but um, they, they don't have too much of a, of a sense of like sculptural 3D quality to it. Which is, which is great, you know? I, I wasn't aiming for that at the time. And certainly stylistically, you, you don't need to convey structure. Um, but understanding structure, whether or not I convey it, is, um, is something that I desire. <clears throat> so when you're trying to convey structure, like you are in this drawing, um, probably the most important thing that I could mention is that simplification is amazing. <laughs> Any reference that you look at is going to be far too complex for you to convey, and it's got more complexity than you actually need to convey. But if you can look at something and break it down into a much more simplified shape, then it's a lot easier to wrap your head around how that thing exists in space, how that thing would respond to a light shining on it, all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's the benefit of breaking stuff down simply, is I can learn how light behaves on a sphere. I can learn how light behaves on a cube. To just intuit how light would react to a really complicated object that now that can be really tricky but if you start off simple and then you build the complexity up from there then um then it actually becomes a pretty simple exercise if if you map in your head basically how light responds to a sphere a cylinder a, a cube a triangle or a pyramid um if you learn those then well gosh 
you could draw anything and how light responds to it um, as long as you learn how light responds to those things. Now you'll see that at this stage in the drawing, we aren't talking simple forms anymore. This is like pretty complex stuff, you know, with all kinds of lines and, and angles on it. But as you've seen from the process, um, it was a slow buildup to that. We started off with horizontal lines. I turned those horizontal lines into basically straight lined planes that really simplified the face. You know, the nose was just a wedge. And then from there, um, I could zoom in a little bit and say, you know, right now I'm working on the eye. So let's talk about that, for instance. Now I'm zooming on to the context of the structure of the eye. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what's the next level of simplified detail that I can throw on top of that? And you can iterate on that over and over and over again and eventually get a, a perfect likeness and just incredible rendering and details um, if that's what you want. It all depends on what you're aiming for. So see here, that line that I just made underneath the eyebrow is um, probably what I consider to be one of the biggest errors in this drawing. And that's because if you look and see the eyebrow on the right side of the page um, is lower than the eyebrow on the left side of the page. And what I believe that's done is it's kind of destroyed that horizontal line that I had that suggested a brow line. So I wish that I had raised that right side eyebrow up a little bit higher. That would have, have sold the, uh, the structure better. But that's cool, you know. Um, I, I'm still working on my aim, honestly, <laughs> with a pencil. You can see that I'm drawing with the pencil sideways rather than, you know, a standard way you hold a pencil in the tripod grip when you're, you know, writing or something like that. And uh, that's very new for me. I'm, I'm actually still really figuring out how to, how to have aim <laughs> when you're doing that. But one of the really cool things that I've discovered with that grip is that um, the flow that I can get is, uh, is much freer and, um, and full of possibilities. Another one of the things that I've learned this month in drawing is that um, accuracy isn't the, the whole name of the game. Accuracy tends to be what we what we hyper focus on when we when we begin as artists and accuracy is very important but um but flow is another very important quality and um the best way to describe flow i think would be confidence basically it's that um this line that i'm drawing has a very definite direction to it a very definite quality um, this line knows what it is. Now you contrast that with uh, a drawing that maybe has like a lot of tentative kind of hairy strokes, you know, not really knowing exactly where it wants to go, not really certain that the accuracy is correct. Um, what you get as a result of that might be a drawing that's accurate, but with all the kind of hairiness and multiplicity of the lines, um, the drawing may come off as not as confident as it could be and not as clear of a sense of direction as it could have. You'll see here that at this stage of the drawing, um, I, I put in variation on the darkness and lightness of the lines. And that's something that I've just kind of started experimenting with more. Um, I've done a couple little studies of uh, John Singer Sargent in his charcoal drawings, um, as well as Lane Brown, who is uh, an excellent figure artist. And um, what, what I've learned from some of my studies with them is that I can use variation in the line weight to add visual interest and also to suggest what's going on with the form. In a general sense, if you see a dark line there, um, 
Well, number one, I'm putting the dark line there because I, I want your attention on it. But but there's more to it than that also. Um, if a line is uh, sharper or darker, that could mean that the form is turning very rapidly at that point, or that you have an area of really light value juxtaposed against an area of really dark value, and, and I'm pushing the line in order to suggest that that's what's going on there. You'll also see that um, I filled in the entire background with a dark shade, and the hair even almost kind of blends in with the background, especially on the top and the top left side. You'll see that um, the hair, in a sense, almost disappears into the background. There isn't too much of a dividing line there. Um, that is an idea that I have stolen from John Singer Sargent. Something that he did um, was he would just blend part of the hair in the background and then maybe draw a little bit of a contour just to suggest the shape. So that's me stealing from another artist there. And now at this stage of the drawing, it looks like I'm, I'm pretty much satisfied with the structure that I've created. Um, and now I'm going over different regions and, um, and darkening. Here I'm darkening points of interest primarily. And I'm also finding areas where I specifically want there to be a hard edge or a soft edged shadow and made sure I've included that. And I'm getting pretty close to the end of the drawing here. Now what you see me doing with my eraser is um, I'm erasing out the points where, uh, where light is hitting the model directly. So I'm basically recreating our, my lightest lights. Some of these areas on the face had gotten smudged from, you know, a bunch of graphite. So I'm re-whitening those areas to, um, to create another sense of form where you can see that um, the, where the light directly hits the model is going to be um, the brightest areas of the face. And you also see another fun little thing I did was I sort of smudged out the, the top of the hairline on the top left side into the forehead. And that's just another stylistic thing I decided to do for this. So that is um, pretty much my, my whole drawing. Um, thanks for watching, you guys. This is a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm planning to do this every month. It's not always going to be a portrait. Um, I think basically whatever I'm studying that month, I'll kind of find a, find a good challenge that, that contests the thing that I'm working on and and yeah, I'll probably use that as the thing that I'm creating. So in the future, I know one of the things I want to do is to draw a face like this, but purely from the imagination. Woo! That's kind of a scary challenge to me, but also exciting. So that might be something I do once I've concluded this course that I'm doing on faces. But anyways, I hope you guys appreciated getting a, a little look into the current state of my skill and the process I use in drawing. Hope you learned something and had a good time, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to help me on my journey to becoming a professional, um, support me financially on Patreon. I would really appreciate that. Um, money would certainly help me to be able to dive in more deeply into this uh journey of becoming a pro and this process of creating more and better videos of what I've learned and what I know about art. So if you like what I do, um, I would really appreciate your support on Patreon. Also, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a great day, you guys. See ya.